We didn't set out for it to become an institution and never thought it would last 25 years. I started working at Open Studio in 1989, and that's when I first met Sandra Rechiko and Carl and Jean Trendle, Lisa Neighbor. I was in a couple group shows, and they had then invited me to be part of this new project that they were putting together, which was going to be a gallery and artist-run sort of collective. You know, there was at least five of us that had connections with Open Studio, and the Spadina Hotel was still open at the time. That's I right. mean, that was my home. <laughs> that's that's your where I lived. Yeah. I came to yeah. Toronto in the '80s. What I was really impressed with is I came to Redhead, and we had a logo. Artscape has been leading the fight for reasonably priced studios for artists. With help from a $50,000 grant from the City of Toronto, Artscape has rented the eighth floor of this building. The space has been divided and is leased to artists. 17 artists will display their work in this gallery. We incorporated in 1990, but the gallery didn't open until 1991. We probably only took possession of the gallery maybe a week or two before we had the show opening. We stained the floors, we had to get the walls up, paint them. Everybody was just in and out of the gallery at all hours. And so we'd all kind of show up and say, oh, that's new, I haven't seen that before, and oh, whose piece is that? And people were bringing things in and trying stuff out, and so I remember it being a little bit crazy and chaotic. open a show like that but it was like well you can't pick one of us it was just crazy but we threw a really good party actually got press and that kind of exposure was really important to young artists. Also today there was an opening of a dozen artist studios at 96 Bedina. And to all the artists, best wishes. I've uh, had an opportunity to see some of the space and to hear from some of you as to why you're here. And it just uh, strengthens uh, my belief in the value of this kind of project. The Toronto scene at the time, I think, it was really serious. There's a certain type of work that seemed to be acceptable to be shown in galleries. Mm -hmm. And I think that Redhead really kind of broke that open a little bit mm -hmm. to include lots of different types of work. could have a show once every 18 months, which would be really important, you know, if you want to keep growing and showing and having that kind of stability. We meet once a month. I think we do. Yeah. So we'd go to someone's apartment or we would go to the gallery. We'd look at slides. But we were going there all the time. 
Apple Classic that was there. It's this <laughs> great resource you could use a real computer. Everyone on the Redhead was roughly of the same generation, roughly the same age, yeah. except for Tony, yeah. who kind of had this kick around at doing it uh, right. with, Chroma uh, with Chroma Living. Tony Wilson was part of Chromazone for a number of years in the 80s. So they were like 10 years ahead of us, and they were very successful, and so we really looked up to him in a sense. He had a lot of knowledge. He worked out of his apartment. He had a very small apartment. I was going away in August for a month, and I suggested that he could have my studio. And I came back at the end of August, and I, um, I went in to visit him because I was sort of needed to arrange when to get, you know, when to get the keys and everything, although he was going to stay there until his show was up. He had all these large, ambitious paintings and barely started most of them, or maybe a quarter done, and um, his show was in a week. <laughs> and I remember thinking, gosh, you know, to myself, like, that's, you have a lot of work to do in a week. A couple days later when I, I called his apartment and his um, roommate answered and um, uh, told me that he had died the day before, which was just the day after I'd seen him. So it was a big shock. It was probably the first time that many of us had encountered that kind of experience of the death of a friend. Everyone had their own sense of humor and their own energy, and Tony's energy was just, he was a, a lovely guy, so suddenly he's not there. He's not there. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's a big shock, and it's a, that's a tough thing to, to handle in a way. But I think it did kind of, you know, sort of bond us in a way. I think, it, I think we did bond together as a group and sort of, yeah, I think, I think bonding is a good word. We really wanted to find a way to honor him and his work and in the next few months we made a proposal for funding to have an exhibition of his work the following year. thought that you could still be a commercial gallery without making commercial work. You could do anything and we'd find a way to sell it. And we had a marketing committee, so we put a lot of energy into trying to get attention for the gallery. These events were a way of inviting other artists to contribute work to fundraise for the gallery and creating community. Some people wanted a really serious, kind of more traditional model, and then other people, I would say, a lot of it came out of the printmaking <laughs> division, uh, wanted to play with the logo and start manipulating the marketing and the promotion stuff. I seem to remember some people thinking, oh, maybe we're going too far with it, but I always thought it was um, a lot of fun because it was identifiable. We printed that head on to everything, pretty much. We were shameless. We didn't care. <laughs> And this was like a dog leash with a dog tag sort of thing. It says Redhead there and then City of Toronto 1994 vaccinated against rabies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was Jean's design. Jean's Jean, design? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I was part of the marketing committee and I, I did feel a little bit naughty sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of like the gift shop, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You leave the AGO and you get like the little AGO gift and we kind of had a version of that.
before the Redhead, really all I had as a kind of art community was expatriate people from Alberta. So it really kind of opened up this whole social world and art world. Suddenly I had many more connections and raised everybody's visibility. It's a small business that we all kind of owned together and requires an enormous amount of energy. So in addition to having your day job and then making art, it's not sustainable. I think I'd promised myself five years when it started and I ended up being there for six and that was probably one too long. I think I was the first one to have a, a kid. Right, yeah, and the was, first redhead baby. The first redhead baby, yeah. And uh, so that, it just became too much to show every 18 months. People started moving, you know, changing and, and had different priorities going on in their lives. So and we did bring a lot of new members over those first five years that I was there. There is a 25th anniversary exhibition coming up and it's the current members uh, responding to various images from the original portfolio that we did in 1991. That's a recognition of, you know, that seed that was planted 25 years ago. It's a little bit like watching Saturday Night Live. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah. Without, kind of without the residuals. <laughs> take bets on how long the redhead will exist. Mm. <laughs> Maybe longer that. than us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs>